Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Mapped by Murder. Today, we say goodbye to Pakistan and head over to Nigeria. So, I wasn't going to make a video on this at first, but then I found the few videos online are either in a regional dialect of Nigerian, and the handful that are in English either have information missing or are just poorly translated. This is the case of Ibadan, Forest of Horror. Ibadan, Nigeria, March 22nd, 2014. Abakunda, a commercial motorcyclist, or a motorcycle that acts as a taxi, was taking an unknown passenger to his destination. Abakunda receives a phone call from a friend asking if he could come and pick him up, to which he responds, I have a customer with me right now. Let me drop him off first, and then I'll come back to get you. Stay where you are. A few hours pass, and the friend has not heard from Abakunda. So he decides to visit his family home and see if he had just forgotten to collect him, to which they told him he has not yet returned. So together, they head off to the local police department who inform them that they cannot do anything at this time. Abakunda's friend and family gathered a small group of people and formed a search party to go and look for him as this behaviour was out of character. Eventually, they came to a river crossing at the end of the village and Abakunda's motorcycle was there but there was no sign of him. At first, they were worried that something had happened to him Maybe he had got into an accident or something, but his bike was correctly parked and there was no evident damage. The search party began to follow the river downstream in case Abakunda had fallen and been swept away. After a short distance, the group discovered what appeared to be an abandoned building and began to move closer to investigate. Around the outside of the building, they didn't find anything of interest and were almost ready to leave when one of the members of the search party shouted and signalled for the rest to call the police. Peering through a window, looking inside of the building, a small group of people could be seen chained to workbenches and walls. Making their way inside of the building, they were surrounded by piles upon piles of discarded clothing. After getting closer to the individuals chained to the walls and workbenches, it was said that they looked like living skeletons. All of the victims were malnourished and barely alive, and unfortunately, at the time of rescue, one of the captives was so weak that they died whilst being freed. When the police arrived and began searching the area more thoroughly, they soon found that there was a minimum of 20 decomposing bodies scattered throughout the building. When everybody was accounted for, Abakunda was not among the survivors or the dead. The rescuers called Abakunda's phone one more time and this time he was able to answer. He told them that his battery was about to run out but he could hear them. They were above him. The search party began to look around the surrounding area where they found entrances leading underground. A further 13 people were found to be buried. The person all persons responsible for this have still not been identified. However, six people were arrested at the site for being quote unquote security at this building, none of which said they could identify the person or persons behind everything. News quickly spread about what had been found in the forest in Ibadan. The local residents soon formed a mob and headed to the location. There, there were major clashes between the police, quote unquote security, and the local residents. During this time, many people were injured and two men were burned alive. Now, the police believe that these men were the two that were responsible and the angry mob took retribution with their deaths but nothing can confirm or disprove this fact. This case is still an ongoing investigation even though I think that the police will never get to the bottom of this. I'd like to close 
with two quotations from survivors. I was sitting somewhere near the Agadi gate area of Ibadan when some people just swooped on me and rushed me into a vehicle. I had been in that place for four months in the forest. We might not have been given food for a whole week. People were dying. I am from the compound of the late Baba Awolowo of Okebola in Ibadan. Some people came and kidnapped me while I was sitting in front of our house. Nobody was around then. My people were in Lagos. They said I was wanted somewhere and that they came to arrest me. They took me away in their vehicle. Later, I found myself in that forest. Thank you for listening to Ibadan Forest of Horror. And remember to always stay safe. If anything has happened to you, yourself, or somebody that you know, maybe in your town or your country, and you'd like me to cover it, please feel free to contact me.